Hi, Vijay Mistri here, preparing you for excellence. Now today I want to share insights on high-performing teams, how you can build an effective high-performing team. And I see many companies out there that struggle to have these high-performing teams. So what I want to do is I just want to walk you through some of the challenges that businesses face and I'll give you some specific insights as to what you can do to have a high-performing team in your particular business, in your particular department, wherever you are. So let's just go straight into this particular small presentation. And let me start by saying that everything starts with the tone at the top irrespective of where you are, what your company is, which sector you are in, it's all about the tone at the top and the leadership at the top. It's about the behavior, it's about the attitude, it's about the approach, it's about how that connectivity is there. So it all starts with the leadership as we all know. And the first point I want to raise with you is the likability. Now you'll have those team members who you'll see that the leaders like them or they are very loyal or they are aligned. And what's happening here is, is that I don't have anything against having that likability and having those confidants as well. But the point here is, is that are they really competent enough? Because you might be biased towards those whom uh, uh, leaders like or whom you like. So this is a key component that you need to really be very careful about. Secondly, is too shallow. Now, what do I mean by too shallow? Too shallow means that not really engaging with the team members, not really uh, having that interaction, deep engagement and interaction with team members. Recently, I had a discussion with a CEO who was an owner of a company, and he said, Vijay, I threw a huge Christmas party, I take them out for lunches or encourage them to go out for lunches and everything, but I still don't see that motivation and the energy out there. And it's all to do with how deeply engaged you are. And that plays a key component in any aspect uh, of your particular business. The third is, I've seen weak leadership. Now, what do I mean by weak leadership? Is that they get easily influenced. Now, have you come across some of those executives or team members in whatever meetings or, you know, they really take over the discussion. So they really have some sort of an influence over the leaders. And here's what happens is, is that Again, the leaders then get easily influenced and start making decisions based on what these uh, few individuals would be sort of vocal about. The problem here is, is that my point is, are they really competent and capable, capable enough? Because I've seen this in one particular company, there was this, we had a board meeting. It was a family business and there was this board meeting that we were having. And there was one particular member from the operations who really thought he had all the answers. But when it really came to performance, when it come to, uh, came to execution, when it came to traction, when it came to transformation, he lagged in many of those aspects. So what I'm trying to say is, is that there are some leaders who easily get influenced because of some of those who dominate discussions. Another key point I want to share with you is lack confidence. Now, there are very many leaders who doubt their own decisions and who are edgy as well. You know, they don't take decisions. They are quite edgy about things and, you know, it's, it's like they lack that confidence. Uh, there was a CEO I was coaching and he was open about it. And he said that, look, I really lack that confidence. And that was playing on his particular identity. So again, that all plays a key pivotal role when it comes to high performing teams, when you want to develop this high performing teams and you want everybody's capability to its fullest. Another key point is rigid. Now, what do I really mean by rigid? Now, when it comes to rigidity, what happens is there are some leaders who are just not open to ideas or adapting to what's happening out there. It couldn't mean even taking risks. Now, you'll say that 
on one side I'm talking about being easily influenced, but here I'm talking about rigid, but easily influenced by a few individuals. So it's a different set of uh, mindset they have, but it, they are rigid when it comes to certain opportunities, certain um, thought processes which would help them to see things with a different lens, with a different perspective altogether. The other point is, and this is a very big one, is lacking clarity and accountability. I've seen role duplicity, I've seen uh, two bosses who, who bombard and expect one particular team member to be meeting their deadlines and there have been quite a few instances here. So lacking clarity and accountability is another key component and this is all uh, the reason why you cannot build a high performing team in your particular business. Now I want to share something here and that is uh, the first thing that you really need to do is an audit and I've got this Slint's acronym and I want you to write this down because this is very important. The S stands for showcasing and let me explain again there was this one particular company and it was a manufacturing company and they had some sales executives but when I was appraising and looking into their uh, the reports and everything they were not meeting the expectations which they had set earlier on. So Upon deeper investigation, it so appeared that when they were hired, they showcased that they could do a lot more. And that was the reason they got employed. And what happened is, as it stands for showcasing. So there's those individuals who, during the interview process, they'll give you everything that you want. They'll paint this rosy picture. So those are the people that you need to really appraise and look into. The second is L. Now I've gone through this and this is the likability. So you need to identify, do a culture audit, like I said, that do an audit and this would be a staff culture audit. And you need to look into the likability, those who are loyal and, you know, the leaders like these sort of individuals. But the problem here is, are they really competent? Have they got the capacity? Are they really transforming? Are they making those shifts? So that is what you really need to look into. I stands for influence gain. You need to identify those who are influential in discussions and decision making, but they don't really add traction to the business overall. N stands for normal. Now, these are the nine to five usual business as usual uh, team members who just come, do their work and leave at five o'clock in the evening. And these are the normal ones who they won't really add a lot of value through transformation or come up with those high end impact driven ideas. So, you know, those innovative ideas, you need to move your business forward. The T stands for talent. Now, you might be having team members who have the talent, who have got the competencies, who have the capabilities as well, and they perform as per expectations. But the problem is, is that their behavior, their attitude, their approach is not aligned to the values of the organization. They sometimes lack empathy or emotional intelligence, the way they behave, and sometimes it's their egos as well. So those are the talent element that you need to really look into. And what you really need to do is you need these ones to really take your company forward and you need to deeply engage with these sort of team members, giving them the right coaching, mentoring, advising, giving them all those insights and guidelines to help them uh, move to the next level, which is the S. And these are your star uh, performers. So you might be having that one or two percent or maybe more who are really performing very well. Their behavior is good. They are aligned to the compelling purpose and vision that you have for your organization. So they are completely fully aligned to your particular business. And there is complete uh, immersion in whatever they do. They come up with innovative ideas. They come up with transformative ideas. They contribute. They give constructive feedback as well. So these are those star team members who can really drive leverage and really drive value in your particular business. And what I want to do now is just give you some insights on what you need to do to build a high performing team. The so first and foremost, 
clarity. Clarity is impact, clarity is where the power is. So what you really need to do is, you need to make sure there's clarity. Starting at the top, what are the collective intentions? You all need to be very clear, having those blueprints in place. You know, having those KPIs, which are completely crystal clear, so everybody understands. So that is very important. And with clarity comes communication. So you need to be very clear about how you communicate your message to the team members, that what is expected, why you expect those sort of results, what is in for them, how it's going to really help them to move forward. There has to be that internal sort of agreement between you and the team members. The second point I want to raise is trust. Now, when it comes to trust, everybody talks about building trust. But trust comes when you're authentic, when you're transparent, when you're genuine uh, with a team member, just like in uh, family members. You know, when we go into a family setup, whether it's your brother, sister, wife, son, daughter, uh, husband, whoever it is, what do you do is that you are just your natural self. So this is what you need to do is you need to be authentic. And this can be felt. We have that social capability and social intelligence to pick up those particular energy frequencies. So we know whom to trust. So that has to be ingrained, that has to be aligned, that has to be centered within. And as leaders, you need to have that within yourself so that you can communicate with full trust. You know, that trust has to be there to make that impact that you need. The third point I want to share with you is asking and touching base. Now, you need to really deeply engage and empower your team members. Now, if you have a thousand employees, and this is what I get a question every now and again, that a CEO of a company who had almost about a thousand employees is saying, Vijay, how am I going to really, you know, ask and engage with all my team members? I don't have that time. But here's the thing. They are cas cascading levels. So the second level of executives is whom you need to really deeply immerse and engage. Have those one-on-ones. Know about their family as well. You need to deeply engage with them so that you them one-on-one -on -one with complete authenticity. And that's the genuine feeling that you have. And that is what you really require. Once you do that, what's going to happen is it's going to permeate to the rest of the organization and the culture is going to build. And you know, what's going to happen is this itself is going to build that high performing team uh, in all departments. So this is very important. And the touching base is that you have to check in every now and again, that can I help you? Is there anything else you need? Are there any resources that you need? I had an audit practice which grew 40 fold in almost 24 months. But here's the thing is that I was always asking my second level, asking them that what is it they need? Do they need more resources? Is there something else they need? How can I help them? to make their job even better. And when you do that, you are empowering them, you are enlightening them, you are enriching them. And those are the core components that's going to help you to move forward. The other thing you need to do is be flexible. If somebody, and if this is a possibility, if somebody wants to work hybrid, or if there are those opportunities within, be flexible, you need to you have that flexibility in place. There was a time in one particular firm which grew 20 fold. What happened is that the manager, the senior manager, he was working late one evening and I was telling him that do it tomorrow. Why don't you just do it? Tomorrow? But he was so committed and dedicated that he wanted to finish there and then. That is called ownership. That is called accountability at the end of the day. So what I told him is, is that look, he's got the flexibility to, to take a few hours or he can take a couple of days, whatever he wants, whenever he wants, just to empower him. So I find that when you have that particular flexibility, your team is going to move to another level altogether. You'll see your company moving to another level. And here's another thing that you need to even give them opportunities as well. There was one particular executive and I was asking her this question that if you were offered twice the salary that you're earning at this particular point in time, would you take up the other job? And she said, no, 
she said i'm not going to take any other job and i said why and she said it's because of the culture that we have it's because of the deep engagement i've got a fantastic box, boss who's flexible uh, who gives me opportunities as well and she was telling me the other day he was asking her to apply for another role within the department which was a slightly senior role because of the fact that i had done so well so she said it's fantastic the culture is fantastic so you need to give opportunities as well you need to make sure as the company grows as the company progresses so do the team members and last but not least is empowering others to be leaders now before i go into the last point i just want to point out that if you're interested i've just released this leadership mastery course it's called how to become a high performing leader in 90 days just click the link below this particular video and you'll get all the details but it is an award-winning program it's called how to become a high performing leader in 90 days i urge and i press upon you to consider that particular program because i i talk about this high performing teams as well in that particular uh, whole program and the last point that I want to share with you is empowering others to be leaders. Now, you need to come to a stage where you, if you want to scale, you need to empower others to lead. So when that happens and when that accountability piece comes in place, then you are going to be able to uh, not only be a strategic thinker, but you'll then be looking into mergers, you'll be looking into acquisitions, you'll be looking into other opportunities within the organizations for it to scale up. So you need to have those leaders within your particular company that is going to take over some of the core responsibilities that you are holding at this particular point in time so that you can move to another level altogether. So my dear friends, I hope you found this video useful. Please like, subscribe to this particular channel. I'll be sharing a lot of insights. I'll be sharing more videos that will help you to move to another level altogether. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.